a bait of the day, a vintage Strike King Timber Spoon. With I, I always put a ball bearing swivel in front of it. But uh, man, they just don't make these anymore. I mean, if you want a really good spoon to go through heavy, heavy brush, this is a great spoon to do that with. It's a shame they're not made anymore, especially with the with the metal weed guard. Of course, I've replaced the skirt on that. But man, that's just a really great bait, especially with the grub on the back of it or something, or even a trailer hook, if you can get away with it. But that's an awesome bait. Just wanted to show that off today, a blast from the past. It's a great lure. It's a shame we're not made anymore. We're going to go over something else, kind of similar. Are you ready to run a gun? It's time for blast off. Let's go. Hey guys, Tiger with you. Welcome back to Bassin 101. Another episode in Simplify Your Fishing. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. But, you know, I've been doing my own research for myself and trying to figure out what, I'm, what I want to do as far as simplifying everything. I'm sure a lot of you guys have too. So here's a, here's a question for you. Um, okay. So you know your style of fishing, right? But does it limit what you can throw? If it does, that's okay. You know, not everybody throws the same lures. And definitely not everybody throws the same lures the same way. I mean, the way I fish a worm is not the way you fish a worm. It's not the way you fish a topwater or whatever. Everybody's different. Everybody has their strengths. And if you're trying to simplify your fishing, absolutely play to your strengths. You know, if there's only one style of plastic worm that you seem to catch all your fish on, then why would you carry any others? Make sense? If there's a particular model of crankbait, or even if there's a particular particular color of a crankbait in all these different models, would you just carry that one color? You know, why not? Um, perfect example, you know, one of my favorite colors in spinnerbaits is chartreuse lime and white in a flat rubber skirt. And I've graduated to where I basically split my spinner base down the middle. Some are chartreuse lime and white, some are black. And that's it. I just vary the spinner baits by wire diameter, blade combinations, all that kind of stuff. That's how I separate my spinner baits. I really don't worry about color so much. I, I go for more what the vibration is, how I want the bait to run. Um, you know, plastic worms, I think I've, I've pretty much narrowed it down to one type of worm, which I'll go over down the road, because that one type of worm offers me so many different variations of riggings. And I'll give you a hint, especially for a couple of you guys out there. It's not a Senko. <laughs> so, I know, you're better than that, man. Everybody throws one. I'll give you that. But it's a great bait, what you expect. But I, I think I've narrowed it down to one worm. I've narrowed it down to a couple of different particular crankbaits. And I'm just kind of getting everything really narrowed down to where, believe it or not, it's just a handful of different kinds of baits. And you know, is that limiting what I can do? Well, absolutely it is. But if I'm playing to my strengths and what I have the most confidence in, why not just go ahead and just throw those from now on? You know, it doesn't mean I'm not going to keep the other stuff around. I'll still keep it for a back stock case, you know, a couple of years down the road. Hey, maybe I want to start throwing that again or something. Okay, throw it in the box. But it's it's a never-ending process. And I've said this before, guys. If you think that you're going to put your your simplified tackle together within a month, man, you're really screwing yourself. Because it could take a year. It could take two years. Let's see, I've been doing the Simplify Your Fishing now for almost two years, almost two years, and I'm still working on my system. I'm getting better and I'm getting down to the nitty gritty. I mean, I'm down, I'm right there at the finish line. So I'm still trying to do this. And guys, again, when you're simplifying your fishing, don't stay off the water. Hit the water as much as you can. Take something different with you every single time, whether it's a different rod, a different lure, whatever. 
experiment, throw things together, and see if it works, see if you like it. I don't care if you're a, uh, if you wade the bank. I don't care if you walk a pond, on a bass boat, houseboat, canoe, kayak, whatever. It doesn't matter. Hit the water as much as you can. Because I've said before, and simplify your fishing, the worst thing that could happen is time off the water. Because then that mine starts going, you start collecting more lures, and well, yeah, yeah, I can, I can probably see this, and yeah, that one rod right there probably worked for that, you know, whatever. And you go in the water, you don't even like throwing it. So be careful with that. Take your time. There's no, you're in no hurry to do this. Simplify your fishing does not happen overnight. I promise you, it will not happen overnight. You gotta take time. Study what you're doing. Play to your strengths. Try new stuff. Try old stuff you haven't thrown in years. It might surprise you. So that's all I have, guys. I just wanted to run that by you. And it reminds you once again that this is a learning process. And if you choose a lot of lures based on your style of fishing, don't worry about the fact that you're limited to what you can throw. Don't worry about that. Stick with what you know you can catch bass off of. That's the most important thing. So until next time, may the Father bless you and keep you in Yeshua's name. And as always, fish out.